determining the empirical formula and the molecular formula for a compound. The empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms of each element. For example, the empirical formula of decane is C5H11. This means there are 11 H atoms for every 5 C atoms. The molecular formula is the actual number of atoms of each element in a molecule or formula unit. For example, the molecular formula for decane is C10H22. A molecule of decane has 10 carbon atoms and 22 hydrogen atoms. Notice the coefficients in the molecular formula are just the same as those in an empirical formula but multiplied by a whole number factor. In this case you can see the factor is 2. 2 times 5 is 10 and 2 times 11 is 22. Okay, let's do an example. We're told that the compound ethyl acetate consists of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. A combustion analysis is a procedure in which a given mass of a hydrocarbon is burned. When hydrocarbons are burned, they produce carbon dioxide and water. By measuring the amount of CO2 produced, the mass of carbon in the sample can be determined. And by measuring the amount of H2O, the amount of hydrogen in the sample can be determined. A 0.328 gram sample of the compound produces 0.652 grams of CO2 and 0.267 grams of H2O. Our first task is to calculate the masses of C, H, and O present in the sample. Using these, we can then determine the empirical formula. Lastly, we're given that the molar mass or molecular weight of the compound is 88.10 grams per mole, and we need to find the molecular formula. Now we'll work through each one of these steps. We start by calculating the masses of C, H, and O in the given 0.328 gram sample. The C burns to produce CO2. We're told that 0.652 grams of CO2 was produced. We calculate the C in this much CO2 as follows. We multiply the 0.652 grams of CO2 by a conversion factor to change grams of CO2 to moles. One mole has a mass of 44.01 grams, the molar mass of CO2. We also know that there is one mole of C in a mole of CO2. So we multiply by the conversion factor one mole of C to one mole of CO2. Since we're asked for the mass of C, we multiply by grams over moles. One mole of carbon has an atomic mass of 12.01 grams. As you can see, we can cancel the grams of CO2, we can cancel the moles of CO2, and we can cancel the moles of C. We're left with grams of carbon. Multiplying 0.652 by 12.01 and dividing by 44.01 gives us 0.178 grams of carbon. Now for hydrogen. The H in ethyl acetate burns to form H2O. We were given earlier that 0.267 grams of water was produced. The mass of H present in this much water is calculated as follows. We write down 0.267 grams of water and we convert it to moles by multiplying by moles of water over grams. One mole of water has a mass of 18.02 grams, the molar mass. The formula H2O tells us that there are two moles of H in one mole of water. We convert moles of H to mass by multiplying by grams of H per mole. One mole of H has a mass of 1.01 grams, the atomic mass. We can cancel the units grams of water, moles of water, and moles of H, leaving us with grams of H. Multiplying 0.267 by 2, then by 1.01, .01, and dividing by 18.02 gives us 0 0.0299 grams of H in our sample. The other element present is oxygen. 
we can calculate the mass of oxygen by taking the total mass of the sample, which is 0.328 grams, and subtracting the sum of the masses of C and H. This is equal to 0.328 minus the sum of 0.178 and 0.0299 grams which is 0.328 grams minus 0.208 grams, which comes out to 0.120 grams of oxygen. Using the masses we obtained for CH and O, we can determine the simplest or the empirical formula for our compound ethyl acetate. We do this by finding the number of moles of atoms of each element present. To do this, we have to use the atomic mass of each element. We're not concerned with diatomic molecules here. We start with 0.178 grams of carbon that we determined were in the sample. 0.178 grams of C, we multiply by the conversion factor moles of C per gram. One mole of carbon has a mass of 12.01 grams, the atomic mass. 0.178 divided by 12.01 equals 0.0148 moles of C. Next we calculate the moles of H. 0.0299 grams of H are present in the sample. 0.0299 grams of H times moles of H over grams of H. One mole of H has a mass of 1.01 grams, its atomic mass. 0 0.0299 divided by 1.01 .01 gives 0 0.0296 moles of H atoms. Finally, we can calculate the moles of oxygen atoms. 0 0.120 grams of oxygen are present. 0 0.120 grams of O times moles of O over grams of O. One mole of O atoms has a mass of 16 grams, oxygen's atomic mass. Dividing 0 0.120 by 16 gives us 0 0.0075 moles of O. So to summarize, the sample we have has 0 0.0148 moles of C, 0 0.0296 moles of H, and 0 0.0075 moles of O. Since the ratio of moles is the same as the ratio of atoms, we can write a temporary formula for our compound. We can call it C.0148, H.0296, O.0075. Now this, of course, is not our final answer, as subscripts in a formula must be whole numbers. What we do here is we divide each subscript by the smallest one, which looking at the three numbers is 0 0.0075. So we divide each of the subscripts in the formula by 0 0.0075. 0 0.0148 divided by 0 0.0075 is 1.97. 0 0.0296 divided by 0 0.0075 is 3.95. And of course, 0 0.0075 divided by itself is 1. Now 1.97 is very close to the whole number 2, and 3.95 is very close to the whole number 4. So the empirical formula, or simplest formula, is C2H4O1 or C2H4O. The C part of this question is to find the molecular formula. C2H4O1 or C2H4O. The C part of this question is to find the molecular formula. It tells us that the molar mass or molecular weight of the actual compound is 88.10 grams per mole, or AMU if you like. We start this process by finding the molar mass, or the formula weight, of the empirical formula. This is the molar mass a compound with our empirical formula, C2H4O, would have. The empirical formula is C2H4O. We add up the atomic masses of the elements as follows. There are two atoms of C, so we write 2 times 12.01, plus 4 atoms of H times 1.01, plus one atom of O times 16. Adding these up gives us a total of 44.06 grams per mole. We can call this the empirical formula mass. Now the molar mass or molecular weight of a compound is a whole number multiple n 
of the empirical formula mass. N can be one, two, three, or more, depending on how large a molecule the compound is. We can write this mathematically as molar mass equals N times the empirical formula mass. We solve this equation for N by dividing both sides by empirical formula mass and get the formula for N equals molar mass divided by empirical formula mass. So putting in the values we have for these things, N equals 88.10 grams per mole over the empirical formula mass, which is 44.06 grams per mole, which you can see comes very close to 2. This means the molecular formula is 2 times the empirical formula. We write C2H4O, put it in brackets, and multiply the whole thing by 2, which means we multiply each of the subscripts in the empirical formula by 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 1 is 2. So now we know the molecular formula is C4H8O2. We can check to see if our answer is right by finding the molar mass of C4H8O2 and seeing if it comes out to the molar mass we were given earlier. So, 4 times 12.01 for C, plus 8 times 1.01 for H, plus 2 times 16 for O, adds up to a total of 88.12 grams per mole. The given molar mass was 88.10. So you can see we're correct with an experimental error. So in summary, the empirical formula for ethyl acetate is C2H4O, and the molecular formula is C4H8O2.